We're very excited today because we have a really fun guest, Kim Yarbrough, singer extraordinaire. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Hello. How are you, beautiful ladies? Hey, Kim. Fine. Uh, Kim was a, a well, um, a contestant on our I, show, right? Yeah, we had a talent contest in Hollywood. Oh, that, that and contest. Kim yeah. was our one of our star contestants. Mm -hmm. And we always remembered her because she stood out. And uh, that's why when we started doing the podcast, we said, oh, maybe she'll come on this show. Maybe yeah. she'll chat with her. Because you're... you're you know, I was going through your website. I, I didn't know that you did all of the things that you have done. Uh, it's almost not fair. <laughs> you're so talented <laughs> and beautiful. And your, your voice is, um, well, and you were on The Voice. Right. Which everybody loves that show. So I watched um, the clip with th that and it was, I got goosebumps. I was really? Like, oh, yeah. That was exciting. That's my music. I love that kind of music. So, uh yeah, Shaka Khan and uh, what, your, your voice. The... Which Shaka Khan uh, song did you do um, when you Tell were? Tell me something good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I just got goosebumps again. <laughs> I have goosebumps. Oh, because I, I love her. I love, I just love that style and that voice. And I was watching Christina Aguilera, you know, because you, right. you do a lot of her. I don't know what they're called. I'm not a singer, but you know, the runs, the runs with her voice and stuff. And she was just like itching. She was like, oh my gosh. And I don't, you know, who knows what was in her head at the moment? Cause you think, is she thinking this sounds like me or this sounds like my style. And um, then when Adam Levine clicked that button. Yeah. yeah he, so you were on Adam's team, I gather. I was on team Adam. How was oh. it? How was that? Oh my God. It was the ride of my life really yeah i always tell everybody it was like someone strapped me onto the outside of a rocket not in the rocket it's much more exhilarating when you're straddling the rock right <laughs> oh my god and strap on strap in honey we're going for a zoom we're going wow, for a that's ride. Awesome. yeah it was it was pretty freaking amazing my whole what? life changed Oh my God, that's so wonderful. Yeah, How? What was the thing that you remember the most though? Was it like the audition? Was it the actually getting selected? Was it during the show? Um, gosh, there, well, I was on the show. I was a finalist. So I was on the show almost the entire year. Oh my God. Wow. It's so hard to pick one moment. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, please. Hang on, there's, there's a video playing here that I really, don't want to look at <laughs> right distracting okay get this video off my screen okay thank you very much um it's hard for me to pick one moment uh because i was on there the entire season i i wasn't eliminated until three weeks before the end wow. of the show Wow. So I ended up being in the, the top 18 mm -hmm. before I left. And um, I don't know. Uh, I just have to pick moments. Um, yeah, of course. There, at the beginning, um, they were asking me, was I, was I scared? And I was like, no. And they well, were- You weren't? Of, you weren't scared? He's a no. Pro. <laughs> they, they, the producers and people were kind of put off by that because you know, they want to create good television, sure. like right. you, we need to show her. And I, I, I just wasn't because That's I That's so good that you weren't though. That's so yeah, good. I thought I don't normally get stage fright unless I'm unprepared. Right, right. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. It was like, I knew I was born for that moment. I've been working mm -hmm. my entire life for this moment right here, something just like this. If you like our videos, go ahead and click on like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thanks. And now's not the time to be nervous, honey. Now's the right. time to wow. bring up everything the ancestors have given you and everything you ever knew and you ever learned. Why go through all of this your entire life if it doesn't prepare you for this moment? And then the moment comes and you shy away from it? No. That's so so self-sabotaging if you would do mm -hmm. something like that, right? That's good advice, though, for younger I was, people. I was just thinking that. that. 
um, you know, that are, that are like teenagers that, that they think they want to be on the voice or whatever, then prepare, do the work. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, be ready I, for it. I, I have spent my entire life getting ready for this. And it's funny, the whole, the whole season, I'm like, okay, Kim, this is your big opportunity. Just don't mess it up. Every right. day I'm saying that to myself, you know, don't say anything wrong. Don't make a wrong move. <laughs> I'm trying to be relaxed. And, you know, people said I, I went through the season with grace, but, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, Kim, just don't mess it up. Just don't mess, please just don't mess this up. Well, that's probably where your acting skills came in a little bit to play as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well then Cause... also, um, what was it like working with Robin Thicke? So I saw that clip. Oh, I loved him. I had been wanting to meet him forever. Wow. And um, we found out just before we walked in the room. Really? Who we were gonna work with. And it was funny, they, they had to tell us because some of the young kids on the show that were like 16 and 15 and 13, they were like, who is Alanis Morissette? I don't know who that is. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. But they had to tell us to avoid embarrassment, but right. uh, you know, I was one of the old heads, so I knew. <laughs> That's I knew great. All, I knew all yeah. of the, the celebrity coaches yeah. they were gonna have us paired with. So yeah, I was really looking forward to that. and. It was everything I imagined and wow. more. Yeah. yeah, I can only imagine. Um, yeah, Adam Levine and Robin Thicke and all the other people. And did you make any friends that you've stayed in touch with anyone from the show or? You know, I have. I stay in touch with not really friends because we don't. And, you know, COVID has just yeah. done a number on all of us. But, yeah. um, you know, I have people that were on the season that I was on and I see them in Starbucks sometimes. Um, nice. We keep up on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah they're, they're nice. about maybe six or seven of us, yeah. maybe eight, 10 on Facebook. And yeah, we keep up. Wow. Yeah. It seems like it would be a unique experience that only you could share with those people. Who had been on the show too so yeah especially when we got down to the final six on adam's team oh, wow. we became really tight yeah we became wow. really tight it's like doing point. a play or something you know yeah. exactly yeah. and yeah. when it's over you get like this depression withdrawal yeah. because you've been with yeah. this family yeah. for so many weeks and so many months and all of a sudden it's gone and you're like yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Just yeah, curious, definitely. when you're actually filming The Voice, how does that tape, how does the taping go? Is there ever any technical glitches that go on behind the scenes? Did you guys have anything go wrong? Not technical glitches, because it's it's a top notch. Right. It's a top notch production show. I That's mean, good to hear. That <clears throat> whole machine that NBC and, and Mark Burnett and all the producers create together is just amazeballs. I mean, but there was one little thing that that happened uh -oh. <laughs> right before my blind audition. Okay. Um, the band and I had been practicing. We had been practicing Tell Me Something Good. Mm -hmm. And the band leader was like, Kim, you can do this. So why don't you just make them turn around on the first note? And just let out a big whale. <laughs> let out the hugest run ever. Right. And we'll just do it that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do that. That's no problem. I can do a run. What they didn't tell you is that the audience is mic'd. There's a 1,500, 1,700 member studio audience. Right. And what I didn't know is that I, the audience was going to be mic'd. So when I let out my first wail, I, on the original video footage, you can see me do this. And I start wailing and the audience goes, Wah! and it scared the crap out of me. So I <laughs> went like that in the middle of my wail. I mean, <laughs> performed before big audiences before 5,000, 7,000, 60,000 at Dodger Stadium. 
And right. nothing has ever scared me like that because I didn't know the audience was going to be Mike. So oh, wow. it sounds like a lot more people. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And That's so that funny. Was like that was one little glitch, but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't on them. It was me because I just wasn't prepared for what was going to happen. Wow. It wasn't That's noticeable, though. You really delivered. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. Didn't I see you um, at a play at the Pasadena Playhouse? Because you reminded me that in email. Were you performing in that Janis Joplin um, show? Yeah. yeah, that's right. I couldn't remember because yeah. you mentioned that. Well, you were one of her um, singers or background singers in the show. Um, I actually played. <coughs> excuse me. I actually played um, the role of the blues singer, which right. encompassed all of Janis Joplin's um, oh, right influences that she had about seven influences that they showed on the show she mm -hmm. was primarily influenced by um george gershwin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Porgy and bess and the song mm -hmm. summertime as a matter of fact george gershwin's grandson was one of the producers on that show really yeah wow. so, so your character was loosely based on bessie smith a little bit or just sort of it combination was, it was based on bessie smith Ada James, Nina Simone, wow. um, Aretha Franklin, um, awesome. Odetta. I was like the Diana Ross of the <laughs> of the show. Yeah, I had to change like seven times. That's the only reason I say that. But um, <laughs> right. yeah, as she told her story, as Janice told her story, I had to act out all of the songs that impacted her. Right. And I remember that now. Yeah, we had to dress yeah. just like the uh, the artist that influenced her. That was a great show. Yeah, I love that show. Yeah, you guys were talented. The the girl that played Janice. I oh my remember, god, I can't remember her name now, but she was really awesome. Mary Bridget Davies. Oh, okay. I'm glad you remembered yeah. her name. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I I sang with her for two years. She um. She actually got nominated for a Tony for that. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow amazing she's amazing wow yeah you guys were all great there was three singers that she had as background singers too uh that were really good yeah what other so just from snooping around on your website um you've done a bunch of acting what kind of acting do you prefer you're pretty funny <laughs> your characters are pretty fun funny <laughs> you know what you know who has been my benchmark this this whole time since I was six years old, Lucille Ball. Really? I love comedy. her. Comedy is my thing. I mean, I can do dramatic acting. Yep. yep. But I prefer comedy. That's why I moved to LA because I wanted to be Lucille Ball. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you're Kelly good at it. Yeah. Kelly and I were just talking about that last week. Yeah. On our last podcast that we just love comedy because it's so cathartic, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And people, right, especially right now, need to laugh. Yeah. yeah. It's more uplifting than, you know, when you're doing heavy drama, it's it's draining and exhausting, yeah. whereas yeah. comedy is, is uplifting. and Yeah. You know, yeah, it can be with, with a, a, a very, um, I don't know, a very, um, <clears throat> how do I want to say this, character that has a lot of ups and downs if if you really get into the character it can be very difficult on the spirit a lot of actors will tell you that mm -hmm. i have a one woman show um called miss peaches about mm -hmm. the life of etta james mm -hmm. i love Etta know, James. she had a lot of roller coasters in her life and mm -hmm. i can mm -hmm. play them all the heroin addiction and everything i don't leave anything out wow. and the audience feels it too when i'm you know pretending like I'm shooting up. I got the tourniquet and the needle and you can hear the whole audience go. <gasps> wow. Do you have one and of those needles that goes in, it, like it sticks, it doesn't go in your arm and it's, okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So there's no blood or anything? No, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I don't like needles. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's tough playing her. And, you know, even with Janis Joplin, you know, she did a lot of drinking she drinks on stage mm -hmm. um, in the play and she did a few drugs herself and so you know sometimes i felt like that traveling with that troupe 
I felt kind of sad for the people that were playing, uh, well, for the girl that was playing Janice and for, there was another girl that alternated with me in my role. And sometimes it seemed like they were trying to live out, you know, and they admitted to me at one point, you know, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm living out this life. And I'm like, oh my God, that is so dangerous. How can you guys do that? Because after the show, they would go out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm exhausted. I got to go back to my room. I can't even, how do you guys do it? Right? So it's, it's tough sometimes when you um, are inserting yourself into a, a character that has a lot of ups and downs. Sure. You really, you yeah, really got to be strong spirited to get through well, it. Because the, other the side. brain doesn't know the difference. The brain doesn't even know the difference between a dream, right? real life, reality. So if you're acting something out, the brain thinks it's really happening to you. So exactly. you really are experiencing yeah. it. If you're doing it right. That's, that's so, amazing. Yeah. Um, so Kim, I wanted to ask you about your history a little bit. So what you said you came out here for comedy, right? Were you doing acting and music back home? Where, oh, where, are, you, where are you from originally? Memphis. Mm. Hey, Elvis Presley. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I don't know. I. If you want to start the night I got I, the night I came home from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little fast forward about eighteen years. <laughs> well, well, you know, my my dad uh, was a jazz musician and a harmonica player and singer. He didn't do it for a living. He did it as a hobby. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that kind of set the tone for my life because he and his buddies were jamming with the night I came home from the hospital. Uh -huh. um, his buddies came over and my mom was livid, of course, but um, <laughs> 18, actually, I started playing the violin at age six. I started singing at age 18. I started studying classical music at 18. I started singing opera. And from there, I went to R&B and then gospel. And I still continue to play the violin. And I started acting when I was eight, got my first professional job when I was 16 on a theater, a theatrical stage in Memphis. So yeah, all, all my life, I've been doing this my wow. whole life. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So and I, saw, I, um, I saw your performance also on your website of summertime with the violin and then you were singing opera, right? That's opera. Yeah. 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 yeah that was amazing. Thanks. Wow. Porgy and Bess. It's from Porgy and Bess, right? Summertime. Porgy and Bess. That was a life changing experience. My mom took me to see that when I was 12. Oh my gosh. Mm. You're lucky you got to see it perform live. <laughs> oh my gosh. My, my mom made sure that I had a taste of everything. She was very, um, she made sure I grew up very cosmopolitan. Good. That's yeah, great. Lucky you have a supportive family and, you know, it sounds like it was just in your blood anyway, all of it. Oh, yeah. Talent. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And when you were on The Voice, your family was probably like, wow. <laughs> well, my my mom and dad weren't alive at that point, but my oh. sister was there with me and my cousin was there with me. NBC flew them in. They, they really? Fly, yeah, they'll fly in your supporters. I'm telling you, that whole machine is a class act all the way i love it i love that yeah, yeah they, they flew my family in and um they did that for each contestant wow and yeah they were they were right there oh. they were right there that's good to know that you know behind the scenes they're supportive too because sometimes you know what you see on camera is not always what's going on in the background exactly and you you yeah. need that when you're going through that type of experience a lot of people didn't have the um the entertainment or the life experience I had. I mean, when you're 20 years old, right. you know, it's, it's good to have your mom and dad there because otherwise, you know, it's, it, it, it can get to you. It can get to you. The show moves at a very quick pace. Yeah. The days move at a very quick pace. You got a lot to work on. You got a choreographer, you got um, a vocal coach. That's not a celebrity vocal coach that you work with every week. You've got band rehearsal, you got, wardrobe there's something to do all day every day how oh, fun so was, was i want to know about the judges so adam is a nice guy was he easy to work with are they He's supportive a wonderful guy really adam is one and, I, and i'm not just saying this just to just to gush but he, he's one of the last good guys left he had his really brother. yeah oh, that's sweet that's good to hear yeah and what about blake did you get to know him at all because he yeah. and adam 
I, I admire their bromance, <laughs> but I didn't, um, I didn't get to interact with Blake too much. You get to interact with your coach mm. more because mm -hmm. that's your coach. But the only time you ever see the other coaches is when you're standing there after you've done your song. Mm -hmm. so I really didn't get much interaction with Blake. He yeah. probably talked the most after my <laughs> blind audition. Really? Because Blake's the jokester. He's the kidder. Yeah. And, you know, I stand there and talk to them for maybe a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. But it's about 20 minutes before they cut it down. Right, uh, right. Wow. Wow. How yeah, fun. what an amazing experience that just had to be. I love that show. Everybody loves that show. Who oh, yeah. Love the voice. I mean, yeah. the concept coming up with that and the chairs. And I remember the very, where, what season were you on? I was on season two. Okay. okay. I, I saw it. I re, and I remember the first season, like when it first started and I just got addicted to it. Um, yeah. The, uh, the whole concept came over from Holland. This, the show. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the first year kind of struggled along American Idol made fun of us, called us the redheaded stepchild, uh -huh. the, red, the red chairs. And then season two, we just swept mm -hmm. the ratings. It was so much fun. That's true. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. everybody watches the voice oh. that I know and not everybody watches American Idol anymore not that anymore. I know. Yeah, we, yeah. we had 38 million people watching every week. Yeah. And that's just in the US. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and the characters, you know, the interaction with the judges and just like you say, it's a top notch production. It's a very well done show. And then yeah. the, the judges that they picked and their personalities and really Blake and Adam were, you know, they're like you call their romance was a, a big part of it, too. Yeah, um, romance. Yeah. <laughs> just seeing Aguilera, I mean, who doesn't love her? You know, she's got such a history um, of talent, her talent. And uh, yeah, and even the um, the wardrobe and the hair and makeup people win it win emmys every year who does really? that for reality tv wow. yeah yeah <laughs> that's so awesome did, did you um did, did they pick out for something for you to wear or do you did you pick out your own clothes you um, know there was a combination there was a combination because you know being an, an entertainer most of my life i got some stuff in my closet mm -hmm. <laughs> And then some of my entertainer friends loaned me a few pieces to take uh, with me. Right. And I showed them to wardrobe and, you know, some of them they liked, some of them they didn't. And they shopped for everybody and kind of mitch matched every kind of mashed up what you had with what they had and mm -hmm. made you look fabulous with the combinations of, of things. And sometimes it was all their wardrobe. Most of the time it was all their wardrobe, but mm -hmm. my blind audition, that's my own outfit, but that's their jewelry. Okay. Wow. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Anything else behind the scenes? Any other things that you can think of that people would be interested in hearing that went on behind the scenes? Um, so you guys were like, you, you rehearsed every day. You, you basically were part of, you were working every day while during the show, correct? Did you get a day off? Yes, you you got Sundays off. That's it. Wow. <laughs> you got Sundays wow. off. Okay, so I'll tell you, during the season that I shot, um, The Hunger Games was out. Uh-oh. <laughs> and we could not leave. You know, they're legally responsible for us, whether you're under the age of 18 or not. <clears throat> they're legally re responsible for you. So they put you up in a hotel and we're constantly changing hotels. So nobody finds out where we are hmm. and there are no spoilers on the show. Mm -hmm. Stayed at all the top notch hotels in town, all the five star hotels. We even stayed once um, where the president stays. <laughs> in Century City, that one at Century City? Yeah. Oh, wow. and so it's kind of like jury duty with hair and makeup. Okay. <laughs> Funny. You get a skirt for a couple of months while you're shooting the segment that you're shooting, whether it's the knockout rounds or the finals or the blind auditions. Yeah, you get sequestered and you can't leave the hotel room. They will take you in a shuttle to get certain things you need and, you know, people... We'd all go for a pedicure together, all the girls. Oh, 
<laughs> and they would take Fun. it to the shuttle van. Anybody wanting a pedicure, get on the van at two o'clock, you know? <laughs> so so that was fun. But we all got permission to go and see a movie and people wanted to see Hunger Games. Mm. And we're, there are a few of us and we're sitting there going and looking at the screen going, oh my God, that's us. That's oh, us on the oh, right. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, they're, they're fattening us up for the kill. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was like the strange, crazy parallel, but you know, in a good way, in a good right. way. Right. So uh, <laughs> that that was kind of one of the behind the scenes thing. It's like it's like jury duty with hair and makeup. You that, get, that's funny. That's a good yeah. analogy. Yeah. yeah, you get the best treatment ever. They they treat you like superstars going in. Wow. Yeah. So this is may seem like an odd question, but when you were preparing for the audition, did I know you you chose the Shaka Khan song, but were you like worried at all? Like, did someone help you like decide what song to audition with, or you, you just knew right away like that's the song? No, I auditioned with that song at my very first audition before I was even on the show, before mm. I even made it on the show. Mm. And then, yes, they suggest your songs. Mm. Um, I got an email, because you had to watch your emails closely to see what, what they wanted you to do. Because mm -hmm. um, they picked like 230 people to start. Oh, wow. I yeah, you that. haven't made it onto the show yet. They, we had like 230 people and you still had to do four auditions before you even got to the chairs. Oh. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I got an email saying for your blind audition, because it was between that and uh, If I Were a Boy by Beyonce. Mm, okay. And they sent me an email saying, okay, this is our final decision. We strongly, it was, this is the way it was worded. We strongly suggest you sing Tell Me Something Good by Shaka Khan. I'm like, okay, we're in. Okay. <laughs> I know that <laughs> one. <laughs> So, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that's because I'm curious. I have um, some voice students that one of them actually auditioned for the voice. She she was real dedicated. She went to all the different regions, you know, because her father oh, was very cool. supportive. Right. So they wow. we always had this hard time deciding what's you know, what song she was going to sing. So just curious, you know, how you they know what I tell people yeah. for your initial audition. Sing something that you've been singing for years that you mm -hmm. can absolutely kill. Mm -hmm. You want to show your best of your best. And it doesn't really matter how, if it's so up to date, you know, because I see some, I saw one girl, teenage girl audition with um, a Black Crow song that actually is um, not the Black Crows originally, but mm -hmm. it's um, some R&B singer. I can't remember his name, but, and she's like 14 and she's doing this, you know, uh, Black Crow song that was originally a R&B song, but anyway, it worked. She was great. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's just, you know, what songs they can get clearance for, because everybody That's doesn't true. give you permission to perform their song. That's yeah. true. Good point. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Yeah. You nailed Tell Me Something Good. That was like, like I told you, I had goosebumps. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a song I've been singing for 20 years. I, I have voice students too. And, um, you know, I, I tell them when you're building a repertoire, imagine singing a song for 20 years of your life and they go oh my gosh i can't even imagine well once you sing a song for so many years it becomes like your signature right song and you know it like the back of your hand you know it like breathing so why wouldn't you perform that there's several people that haven't seen you do that song before even mm -hmm. though your mom has heard you sing it a million times yeah good know? point good point and it's funny, you hear some famous singers, you know, they always laugh, like, if I have to sing that song one more time, you know, like Frank Sinatra with My Way, it's, you know, but exactly. that's what people are expecting. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Bill, Bill Withers, uh, from what I understand, did not like holding that long note on Lovely Day. Oh. On Lovely Day. He did not like that every night singing that long <laughs> But that's the part everybody loves, right? Yeah. That's, that's what, their yeah. bread and butter. You know, or, but it would be the challenge is keeping it fresh, keeping it yeah. fresh for you. You yeah. know, so that the audience doesn't detect the boredom. Right. <laughs> so for me, the different audiences make it different for me. 
That's every, true. Every audience is different. And I try to tap into the pulse of the audience when I'm performing. And every time it's different, it makes it a different show. Huh. That's smart. That's smart. Cause you're working with the audience. You're getting their feedback, yeah. you know, and you're yeah. using what you got. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next for you? What's what, once COVID's over, what do you hope to, are you going to perform live your one woman show? I hope so. Uh, I hope to do a lot more performing with my band as well. Um, I was doing a lot of that before COVID. My last performance, uh, I was at Vitello's, which is now Feinstein's. Yes. Uh, you sent me a couple invites and I want, I don't think I ever saw you there and I really want to go when you, when you're back. Yeah. We, we had a couple of our last few shows before COVID were really, really good. Mark, you know how you're, you're just on that night and you feel like you're flying and right. Couldn't sing a wrong note if you tried and right. Like, Oh, that's great. Heaven. And then we did the federal bar. Um, and that was that was my last gig, the Federal Bar. And uh, yeah, I hope to do some more live shows with my band. I really, during COVID, you know, they've been doing these car concerts where you drive yes. in and you pay 30, yes. 70 bucks, whatever. I would really love to do one of those car concerts. They're doing them out in Ventura, which is a little bit of a drive, I know, but I went to see um, um, this group, I think they're called Yachtly Crew. <laughs> and uh, I saw them out in Ventura and it was fun because I went with a big group of people. You bring like food and drink and whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah so. I would love to do one of those. And then, you know, I, I'm i constantly shooting uh, TV shows. Right, right. I just received my 50th IMDB credit last night. Congratulations. That's a lot. Thank you. I'm so happy. I've been in the, I've been in TV and film. I mean, I've been acting my entire life, but I've been in TV and film for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. And I have, I've also um, started doing a lot more animation. I am in three episodes of Curious George this year. And wow. I am a series regular on a brand new show that just premiered February 2nd mm. called Kid Cosmic that is okay. on Netflix. Okay. And oh, great. it's about all these kid superheroes what? and I play the mom of one of the kid superheroes. Mm -hmm. ah. That's great. I have to check that out. Yeah, you sent that to me um, and I'm going to. I can't yeah. wait till this is all over. So I hope to see you again at Feinstein's. You know, I never got to see you there and I just feel bad because you're so good about sending invitations Thank you. Out there will be others. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I know when we were thinking like, who can we get on the show that's talented and blah, blah. And then I mentioned you, you know, and Kelly was like, do you think she'll do it? You know, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I'll find out. <laughs> you know, through the years, as we've talked about the show, reminisced what Kimber and I did and the fun we had, your name always comes up as being one of the more talented people. You know, we've got there's right. a handful of people that we always remember that left an impression. Right. Although, you know, there was so much talent. Um, Thank you. you know, there's just so much talent in, in the world, um, but you really stood out. And then That's to true. find out more, you know, we start digging and like, oh my gosh, she's done all these other things too. Right. Um, so that's, it was that's good to hear because it lets me know that I'm I'm doing my job right. I'm yes. doing something right. No, yes. you are. And you're good at like I said with the PR when you send me those emails and it's you're really good about it. You know, but they're always nice emails. They're not like, oh my god, it's her again. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to bombard people and I I knew one guy once that was trying to sell tickets to his show and his his line was Hey, not would you like to come to my show? It was I've got to pay the band, so please buy a ticket from me. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's <laughs> funny. Not <good> PR. <laughs> Why would you say that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's so funny. Funny, whatever. Yeah. Well, um, so yeah, please keep us posted about everything, and I know that you will continue to uh, send me emails, and I just hope that I get to go to Studio City to see you. Do you live in LA? I do. I live in LA. I go over to the Valley maybe once a week. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I won't be able to come and see you because I'm in Wyoming right now. So, um, but when I'm back in LA, I'll be looking you up. <laughs> well, Kimber will let me know when you come back. So yeah. maybe yes. we'll come together. something for that weekend. Yeah. And, yeah. and your, um, are you now, are you selling an album on your website? Is that how do I people get, get your music? 
I am. Um, I have an EP and my the last album that I released on my website. The last, the latest album I released is called Champagne and Grits. Mm -hmm. That's Love me. It. I like that champagne. And, and then uh, there's an EP on there that I released previously. It's a three song EP. Okay, we'll we'll put a post to your uh, website yeah. We'll put a link and uh, encourage people to come and f enjoy your magic. <laughs> yeah, support this talented woman. <laughs> yeah, thank well. you. And I'm on all the social media except for Snapchat. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Cool. Okay. We have to look for her on TikTok. We're we're kind of trying, we're trying to, to now. we're trying to yeah we're trying to figure out a, a clever way to you know get our show promoted on TikTok. So yeah, we're gonna do that next. <laughs> do you ladies dance? Yeah, I do. I mean, Kelly, do you dance? I always say I don't, but if you get a, a, a strawberry margarita in me and play some music, then yeah, <laughs> it, it happens. <laughs> and then you can't stop me. <laughs> The dance videos everybody will watch. Those that's, are true. Yeah. that's true. That's true. We've got to choreograph yeah. something, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. That's anyway. true. Well, anyway, thank you so much, Kim, for coming on. And uh, we so hope welcome. I hope to get to see your pretty face singing um, live after thank everything you. opens up again, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't wait. Yeah. Thank you so much. Best to you. You're a superstar. Um, really, it's an honor to have you on our show. Thanks. Thank you, ladies. And thank you so much for what you're doing. Great show. Oh, thank, thank you. you. All right. We'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Bye -bye. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye-bye.